This video is brought to you in 4K by the Sony FDR AX33 camcorder that is mine by loan only. Wish I owned this camcorder. I might have to review it at some point, but in this case, you get to see it demonstrated in image quality. So today we are going to look at two backup drives, both the same format. These machines use this tape right here, this DC 2120 mini data cartridge tape. It holds 120 whopping megabytes of data. This one is made by the 3M company. This format is also known as the Zymat format. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, or XIMAT format. Uh, this tape has 307 feet of tape as well as 93.7 meters worth. It came in this cartridge right here, so here's what, it, or uh, this case right here, I should say. Uh, and this, this is a brand new one that's never been opened. Here's the case it came out of, and here's the box that everything was in. It was this DC2120 box, and it came in a pair of two. And it says, uh, really interestingly, save up to two hours. And I'm not sure what we're saving two hours of. Two hours of data, two hours of writing and reading to the tape, who knows? So in any case, uh, that's the box. Over here, we are going to use this external hard drive enclosure because it has the power supply connected right here that we can plug into both of these units. There are two units here. One of them is belt driven. The other one has a rim drive on it or maybe an idler drive unit. Both of them have a little stepper motor here and that stepper motor is attached to the read right head, that gold piece you see in the middle of your screen. So both of them have that same action even though the drive method is a little bit different on each one. Both of them have a LED indicator right here on the front to tell you it's in operation. And over here, I have the original five and a quarter inch brackets that you can install these in into a much wider drive. But uh, these units actually use up the same form factor as a three and a half inch floppy disk drive. And in fact, the connector on the back is in fact a five and a quarter, or I'm sorry, a three and a half inch floppy connector or a floppy connector, depending on which uh, one you happen to be uh, using. So what we are going to do today is demonstrate for you the cool process that both of these units go through when the tape is inserted. So I am going to show you both of them in operation and I'm going to cleverly place the microphones to make it uh, a little bit more amplified as to what the little noises it makes are. Uh, this tape is rather interesting, the way that it is driven through the system. It does not have a take up and supply spindle much like tape recorders that we are familiar with. It is completely flat and metal on the bottom of this cartridge. However, inside there is a little belt that runs in between the reels as well as to this little idler wheel right here in the front. So that little idler wheel there is connected to the idler wheel right here, which pulls the tape through. There is also a little door that you can uh, remove here on the front and expose the tape that's on the inside as you see there. So as you insert the tape, this little door moves out of the way, which allows the read write head to be inserted into that space. So these are really cool. They were made in the mid nineties and they are really uh, efficient in their operation and quiet. So that is why I'm gonna place the microphones up close so you can hear them moving along. You may hear some buzzing in one of your uh, speakers and that is normal for this demonstration. All right, here you can see what the tape looks like inserted into the front of the system. There is a status light there on the left side, a status LED, which uh, actually is way back here on the circuit board and then shines through almost like a little fiber optical type plastic piece that brings that light all the way to the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the uh, front bezel here so you can see the tape reels moving inside. Otherwise, they're covered by that door. Another interesting feature right here is the record protector. 
So by switching that little switch over to the right, you can write protect your cartridge so it doesn't get overwritten. All right, so let's remove that front bezel and we'll see it in action. Okay, hopefully that was a blast for you to watch to see the inner workings of both of these models. If you wanna actually see the model numbers themselves, here they are on the bottom of the unit here. So this is the CTM, etc., and this is the uh, 1995 unit. And then down here we have the, I guess this is 51250N and it is from 1994. So both of these units were made by Connor and both of them were made in the mid 90s. Well, that pretty much wraps up this little demo, guys. I hope you enjoyed exploring the QIC format, a format that is now officially on the dead, uh, the, the, the graveyard of backup tape formats and also, also known as QIC80. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to this channel and uh, share with a friend. Leave a comment below if you know something about one of these or you've had some experience with one of them or one of these were you know, a, a terrifying thing of your childhood or something. Uh, feel free to share that information below. And again, I thank you for watching.